And with that, joining me here on the stream once again is the host of the Duke CT Lounge, Charles Thomas. Welcome to the show once more. Ah, welcome. Well, thank you very much for having me. And uh, let's uh, get into what we're probably going to be talking about, the uh, World Series. And yeah, I guess the first question I would have for you is, how does it feel to see your old boy Bryce Harper finally shining on that stage? Well, at least he, well, um, <laughs> at least this time, um, if things go according to plan, he will actually say, you know, his uh, dream of actually getting a world championship uh, to uh, Philadelphia. Hopefully he doesn't get the city wrong this time. <laughs> That's the hope. Because I think after you made that, it pretty much, you know, I think I think that pretty much uh, <laughs> helped the Nationals win, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So if he doesn't have to. You know what? You can look at it this way. At least he didn't have to. So far, it hasn't ended up being another A Rod, in which he ended up did fight, which who did guarantee make good on his word on getting the Texas Rangers to the World Series in 2010 by striking out for the last out with the Yankees, which mm. was just the greatest moment for so many people, uh, so many of us who's been wearing that uh, beleaguered franchise's cap for so long was worth showing up one way or the other. But, yeah, we are talking about, as we are um, give, showing uh, broadcasting this, of course, it is uh, in between games two and three, with the third game of the World Series set to begin tomorrow night from Philadelphia after the Houston Astros and the Philadelphia Phillies split the first two games uh, in back down 250 miles south of me in Houston. And even though, like I said... There's a lot of people, he, at least in this part of the country, they're acting like like there's no one worth cheering for in this thing. I've got to tell you this right here and right now. This has actually probably been the most excited for baseball I've been in a long time, to be perfectly honest. Hmm. Um. Just that this whole, it's just that, because believe me, I've heard a lot of talk about this on the Twitters and everything, especially with a number of, uh, Former players in the life I follow on there and whatnot who ha have their they have a gripe or in some media members as well who have their gripes and whatnot. Most of the people are media members in Los Angeles. We might get to that in just a bit, but the the, the whole new format playoff format they debuted for this season, I think, has probably generated as much the mu the much needed excitement that baseball has been looking for. In a very long time, because the because a lot of people have been talking about um, supposedly claiming that now with three wild cards getting in in each league, which let, let's face it, this is in that sense, this is more or less the same playoff format that the NFL had prior to their most recent expansion, back where they only had, had thirty clubs compared to thirty two, but uh. Some people play, are claiming that, the, and, and I'll, I'll admit this, maybe 20 years ago, I'd have been with these people because that's who I was. But a lot of people seem to be saying that, suggesting that this playoff system has rendered the regular season completely pointless. I disagree with that. If anything, this has made especially the conclusion of the regular season. That last month in September, when baseball is usually in its doldrums, and especially having to now having to compete with the NFL directly for attention, this has made that season, that, that final end of the season, the possibility to be as important and exciting as it's been for a long time. And the Philadelphia Phillies have become Exhibit A to that. And you can also put the Nationals there as well, because remember the wild card and them playing in, not only beating uh, Milwaukee, but they had to beat the Dodgers and the Cardinals as well. So, I but mean, this I think, but this would think it might be even, I'm even more difficult um, step that the Philadelphia had to go through this year, because let's let, let's go over what exactly what the new format basically means. What it is is the because for what it's worth, baseball put together a format that makes it as dis that on paper would make it as difficult as possible for those new wildcard teams that get in to advance because 
the top two seeds in each league get automatic buy into the division series. The bottom two seeds in each league, they in order to advance, they've got to play a best of three elimination series in which they don't get a single game at home. Now, see, keep that in mind. I don't think there's ever been another time in baseball history where they had a playoff series which every single game was hosted by one single team. So they made it as difficult, I think, as possible within reason for these teams, for these lower-seeded teams to advance. And now just the fact that the Phillies just could found a way to overcome those odds and get into this series, that is what people seem to have so many complaints against. Although, I believe it, it's not just the fact that the Phillies got in. It is, of course, the fact that the San Diego Padres, who I think had the, I don't know if it was the fourth or fifth seed that they got, but the fact that they ended the season for a Dodgers team that won 111 games. And even and on the first... Before that, they uh, beat the Mets that were uh, over right. 100 win season. And I think that's a little, people are a little shocked by that. But I'm honestly, um, you know, if they were so good in the regular season, you know, they would actually be successful in the postseason. I've seen this in any, uh, most sports. In fact, I've seen it in multiple times in uh, DC uh, sports lore about how many teams, you know, have like, oh gosh, they're so great. They win, you know, heck, the Capitals won the uh, President's Trophy. And they're going to go all the way to Stanley Cup. And then, oh, they got lost. They got kicked out in the first round. Well, I don't know. having a 3 1 lead. I don't know um, how many people were surprised. Oh, I don't know how many people were surprised about the Mets in this particular case. Just because of the fact that, remember, that was a team that looked like they were going to coast their way to the division title and thus be spared having to play in that opening wildcard series. And then they just completely coughed up the division title to Atlanta again. Only this time, Atlanta ran into the buzzsaw that was the Phillies as well. So basically you had two teams that went had to go down to the wire in the National League East. Both of them ended up winning more than 100 games, and both of them failed to get out of, get, get past the, the opening round series or, or division series or everything. So everyone was complaining about that situation over in the National League, but meanwhile, everything held serve over in the American League because because they, the Astros it did on up with, well the Astro it just with the Astros and the Yankees um, both advancing to the ALCS and of course with the Astros who did finish with the best record in the American League once again just absolutely steamrolling their way past the Yankees once more and that. With that, there's no. It is. It, it is um interesting to point out now that I think about it. Is that, and maybe it's because the Yankees actually made it to the ALCS that people are going. The New York press with the with the Yankees' loss, and maybe even the Mets' loss as well. I have to double check on that. But the Yankees, in particular, all the blame, at least as far within the press and the media, was pretty much put on the players themselves, or at least the organization itself. Sometimes the players were not performing like Aaron Judge did not have a great postseason. Someone will put the probably put the blame on Aaron Boone. A lot of people are putting the blame on Hal Steinbrenner. But the, the blame is more or less being directed to the, or, the Yankees organization itself. Meanwhile, $3,000 away in Los Angeles, everyone's blaming the playoff format for why the Dodgers lost I, I'm, again. I think... Um... I think at this point, if you really want to, um, um, you know, I look at Dave Roberts. I think at this point, you have to look at the manager. And you will look, that team should have been, they should have won multiple championships. They shouldn't just been won 2020. They should have won multiple times. They should have beat the Nationals. Uh, they should have beat the, uh, the uh, you know, they should have beat the Astros there. They should have beat the uh, Boston Red Sox. They should have beaten... Um, so many teams, and they have they didn't. They I, I know you look at the over management uh, management of the pitching and all these other things. Heck, I still look at that whole that um that the last innings of that Nationals game 
And I was like, I am just amazed of how that bad management by that day. I was like, what is he doing? Why is he keeping Kershaw there? You know how he's in playoffs. And then, boom, not just once but twice, tie game. And then goes into, um, you know, let the pitcher who was only good. But like, okay, he had a pretty good knife. And he, he kept him out there. And then next thing you know, Grand Slam, Howie Kendrick. And that was pretty much the, uh, I'm like, why wasn't he fired after that? Okay, he won the World Series, but it was a very truncated season. But after that, they made their deals. They sell, they sold the future. They did all these other things, but they haven't actually progressed. They it's didn't a combination. progress. I would say it's a com. Yeah, some of it might be on on management and Dave Roberts. Sometimes I think you do have to put some responsibility on the players itself because when you you've got a guy like Clayton Kershaw. Who is who has won? I think multiple Cy Young awards in his career. You, you just it just he, he's almost like this this generation's version of Greg Maddox, in which you just think, why can this guy not get it done in the postseason and whatnot? And believe me, I'm saying this as someone who is just hoping against hope that the Rangers do not offer this guy. A huge year, multi-year, stupid money contract to come here to DFW because I have seen that happen way, way, way too many times. Not just with the Rangers, but with other or baseball clubs as well. Where you give the 30-plus year old veteran the huge deal and it's pretty much over. They mail him in for the rest of that time period, and everyone just yeah. acts like this time it's going to work. And I just like. Do you guys not know the definition of insanity? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. The Rangers are not going to sign a Kershaw. They're going to get DeGrom. Oh, <laughs> Kershaw or DeGrom. Both of them. Like I say, especially, like, both of them, they're in their 30s. They've got injury problems these years. That Either one of them would be a disaster waiting to have. And I'll say this. I don't want them to throw money at a Kershaw or a DeGrom or even a Verlander who still finds a way to get it done. I want them to make their own. I want uh, the next Kershaw or DeGrom or Verlander to come out of this organization, which they've just never been able to do. But I do want to uh, touch on two topics. First off is, most, again, what, how, why I think this, um, this new player format actually makes the regular season more valuable. And two... The number one reason why I think so many people are griping about it, or particularly griping about who lost in this. So let's, let's talk about first. Here's the thing, like, the Philadelphia Phillies, they started this season, what, I believe, like, they got to, like, a 22-29 and 29 start that basically led to Joe Girardi getting dismissed as the manager. And once they, they made that change, it, it was just a complete turnaround and off to the races. There's always a there's, there's there's an old saying in baseball, you can't win the pennant in April, but you can lose it. Now, you might not have you might not end up losing it in April. There's a and and I think it's a situation where it's a unique circumstance in baseball because the season does have enough games where with the right format you can get off to that slow start. And still make a push to get a legit uh, run to the postseason. Like, you know I'm not an NFL guy. But I just think that theoretically, you get off to like a 1-3 in three or 1-4 in four start in the NFL. Your playoff hopes are shot from that point, right? For the most part? Yep. Yeah. yeah, for the most part, yeah. You know, because you've only, uh, like, you only got like 10, 11, 12 games left to play. To try and turn that season around, if you get off to if you get start off like a few games under five hundred for the first what's it forty five games or so, you've still got like hundred and twenty or so left to play and try to get back up in there. There's enough time, enough games in that span to recover and get in, and that's why I think the potential here is you got you're gonna go into all get the end of past the All Star break, and there are still so many teams that even if even if they're under five hundred or so, still could technically be in the race for a playoff spot. And not just that, but with, when a team like 
of Philadelphia can make it to the World Series from the final playoff spot, that just gives you even more hope. This is not like the NBA, where you make what well, I've had to deal with the last 10 years or so, people suggesting that in the NBA, you're better off tanking for the number one pick in the draft than you are fighting to get the seventh or eighth seed in your, your conference. Because those teams just have no real opportune shot to actually win the championship from those seeds. But you make one of the lower seeds now here in baseball, and now there is, in the first year of this, of, of this format, actual proof evidence that you can't, with the right with the right type of momentum, with the right type of club, with the right type of pitching staff, you can find a way to move forward from that lower seed. What this means is you're gonna have you should have fewer teams trying to tank in baseball, which never was a huge problem for years, but seemed to be slightly developing yeah. as a problem in more recent years. This is gonna make that more less likely to happen. You're gonna have fewer fire sales at the trade deadline. You get to have more teams really believing that they have it's not going like to yeah, it's not gonna be like a situation like I, I remember in 1997, the Chicago White Sox went into the deadline the end of July. I think they were like three games back of Cleveland for the American League Central, and they still sold at the deadline with the, Jerry Reinsdorf. I believe his actual words were, anyone who thinks this team can catch Cleveland is crazy. That's, that's just not going to work now. There's just you've got way too way so many more clubs that are going to go into the final two months of the season having a legitimate shot of getting one of these three wild card spots in each league, and that's just gonna make the end of the regular season even more intriguing, more competitive, more must watch television, which is what baseball I think needs more than anything else. No, yeah, that's true. It gets more excitement and. By the way, back to the point. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, look at the NBA uh, re- season. It's early in the season now, but I mean, the Mavericks are your Mavericks are two and three. And uh, hey, I mean, Victor Wemun- uh, Wemenba, I hopefully uh, pronounced that right. Um, he is going to be the n- great number one pick, and I honestly think it is going to be. I'm, I'm going to say this right now. It is going to just be the race to the bottom. You're going to see teams in the, this season is going to be a um, a pile up on the bottom. So, oh, right. you know, like it's going Adam to Silver be supposedly already put a lot of teams on notice about that. And my question is, what the hell are you going to do? You going to actually put your foot down and maybe strip a team of his draft pick. Or uh, if, if, if there's actual legit proof that they've been tanking games to try to get it. Yeah. Get, yeah. I'll, I'll buy in. On, yeah. I'll, I'll buy in on that. Shit, no doubt. I don't think they've got the, like, there's, there's just no clause to do that and that's of course that's a whole situation we might talk about that this one day about the whole subject of why american sports need relegation and whatnot maybe we'll be i talk about that another time but yeah that, well, that's just why I, like i said i think that the way this playoffs have worked out and especially just for this first season has just sent a message that because you can possibly get to the world series from the sixth and final playoff spot. That, more than anything, I think will can motivate teams to not become sellers and tankers and quitters, whatever you want to do, as much as possible. And it could be just what it needs to go back to make continuing to make baseball the most competitive sport there is right now. Which kind of brings me to my second p- point here. I keep telling you, people won't, people complain about how the format cost the Dodgers in in the playoffs, and no, they'll, they'll, it and, didn't. And, and, and well, whether or not it did or not, here's the point I'm getting at: is that they will claim, they will talk back about the good old days where yo know, the best team always got into the World Series and how, how they earned it on merit and whatnot. I, I'm going to say this right here and right now: that's not why they wanted to see the Dodgers win. The fact is, the fact that a 111 win team from a major market like Los Angeles not succeeding in the postseason and failing to get to the World Series, that destroys the number one narrative that has been going on in baseball 
for close to the past 30 years, if not more, and that is the, arg the supposed argument of competitive imbalance in baseball and why people keep arguing back over and over and over again about how baseball supposedly needs a salary cap or any other restrictions to reduce player pay to give the small market teams a shot to win. And even though the same that which Houston is now in its fourth World Series in six years, I believe, and they... Houston is not a big baseball market. I will tell you that right now, as a Texas native, don't give me the they're the fourth largest city in the world bullcrap. You're not, a, a Texas city is not a huge baseball market. It's not here in Dallas-Fort Worth. It's not here in Houston. The fact that Houston regularly was among the lowest in attendance, especially and before this run began. And they still have one of the worst TV contracts, I believe, in all of baseball, the fact that they have been able to build the most consistent, and, and don't talk to me about trash cans or anything like that, the fact of the matter is, hell, just the fact that they had to watch, they let a big name player free agent like Carlos Correa go at the end of last season and didn't miss a beat because their player development system is that damn good. I am saying this right now, even as a Rangers fan, even with the cheating allegations, which I said that 2017 was just what the same thing that the 51 Giants did, I cannot have that much hate for this Houston Astros team just because they did what I wanted the Rangers to do for years. But they have done just about everything right as far as player development and continuing to find guys who are hungry and desire to win. Didn't uh, and, Nolan Ryan was a part of that process, I think, with Astros Oh, believe, too. oh, don't get, let's, we don't have, you, I think we don't think we need to get started on that. And that, and that, um, argument and debate and war that continues to go on among people in the DFW's fan base and media to this day, that with Nolan was with the Rangers is when they started finally winning and going to the World Series, and then John Daniels cast him aside, and he went to Houston and built that thing up. That is a whole mess. But believe me, I've heard way too much of that. But Well, it's in your history. I mean, you, you gave up Sammy Sosa. You pretty much bait a whole King's Ransom or A-Rod, even though you didn't have a team around him. And, you know, that sort of thing. It's just seeing yeah. it's a... Uh, but then that's a the topic for another time. But as for myself, the Nationals and everything, I don't see hatred. I just see it's a good, you know, it's uh, it's actually just a, like a little bit of like pity and such because I didn't think they needed it. They didn't need to have that type of stuff. They didn't need to do it because they're so much talented and everything. It's just overall just disappointment, not hatred. And yeah. and I feel like I was the whole, you know, the pandemic did rob us about like everywhere the entire. You know, majorly baseball like fans were just gonna probably just boo them and just have like their variation of like trash cans just banging in the stadiums. You know, it would have just been hilarious, especially here in DC. It would have been like I don't know. trash can day. All I would say is I, f I would, I think the baseball and the clubs themselves would find a way to not allow those trash cans in. I know it wouldn't be allowed here in North Texas because ever since that. They opened that new country club stadium. I'll, I can tell you this. Like I said, we used to have this guy, uh, Zonk Lanzillo. He was longtime Rangers fan. He was a staple at the at both the previous two ballparks, sitting behind home plate and banging on this hand drum for to start a rally whenever it looked like it was going. What it was going. He sadly passed away in 2020 before they allowed fans into that new stadium. They've, I've more or less heard from people who work in that ballpark that, that, that his drum wouldn't be allowed. They're not allowing any mm. noisemakers in this new place. So, who knows how much, how much that rule is going down in other ballparks. That probably wouldn't happen. But just the main thing that I say is, you look at a club like Houston, being able to build a club the right way and through play, actual player development and making smart moves to get a Verlander, and spending money wisely and not just throwing away money left and right because you have an unlimited uh, an unlimited bank account like the Dodgers have. And for the Dodgers to do, spend recklessly like that and, and have it and always come up short so many times. And just like the It Yankees reminds me of, uh, look at the Dodgers, it does reminds me a bit of like uh, what's going on 
with like um well with like an other sports team I, I do follow and such uh Toronto Maple Leafs is that they just they have all this stuff they bring all these things in at what point you look and say it's not just coaching I think it's just the the talent is that they just have this mental block and I think we have to look at the the, the uh the Astros is that they look at the adversity and they continue to they're like okay we've been through this thing and now we're pushing through that it shows incredible mental toughness and honestly I wouldn't mind seeing Dusty Baker getting a uh, championship one more time it just goes to like I said they I remember they've always had a- adversity like that because remember this is a team that uh, a decade ago was regularly losing a hundred games with regularity and Oh yeah. To be personally honest, like I've heard some people in the media who talk on Twitter that the tanking didn't actually really work for them. It was like I guess like I don't think they said none of the actual players they acquired with those top draft picks ended up panning out for them. It was once they it was once they purged all those people in the front office and in the dugout who weren't getting the job done and started getting a more proactive, we're going to actually try attitude that everything turned around. And that's why I will also say if it could be done in a place like Houston, there's no excuse for why it can't be done in a place like Oakland, where, of course, that's the other thing the announcement making is that Manfred has supposedly more or less given the death knell on their future there, of the athletics future in Oakland, where, you know, they just had a terrible season, both just having disastrous crowds in what is a basically a rotting, collapsing stadium there in Alameda County. And again, people are going to try to pull, even as, that's the thing, even as a team like the Astros, found a way to use their limited resources to build a winning club. People are still going to, I know, people are still going to point the finger at the supposed small market problem as to why Oakland cannot succeed. But there is history that that's not true because I keep saying this. Back in 1990, remember, there was still no salary cap in 1990. There wasn't even revenue sharing in 1990. But that year, the Oakland Athletics were hands down and away, the best team in at least the American League. They went on to what was their third consecutive pennant. They had the highest payroll in baseball. They had the third highest attendance in baseball. And they had some legit competition from the guys in San Francisco because the Giants had a pretty damn good team that time as well, making the postseason in 87 and and facing the A's in the World Series in 1989. So the thing is, there is history that Oakland has found a, found a way to win with whatever limited resources it had and was able to draw a fan base in the past. And I've said, this is, the problems in Oakland are solely because of billionaire owners who could invest more money and it lead to making money in the long term, but they just are not going to do that. And if they think they're going to have more success in moving to a place like Las Vegas, where there is like a trillion times much more entertainment competition in there, and they think they can just continue to put out a cheap baseball product in Vegas and expect to make money, yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, I don't think it's going to, you know, again, you need to have, in baseball, you can't just tank. I think the Nationals did that, and they got Bryce Harper and, uh, Strasburg, uh, you know, Strasburg and everything, and it did help them. Uh, but they had, you know, they had to get people around them. They had to get the best talent. They had to get the good uh, management and everything else. And, you know, they had it for many years, and they were off and on and had that nice magical run. And, well, you know, they traded everyone else now. They lost Soto. They pretty much traded everything just to – you know, basically go into rebuild mode until Ted Leonsis buys the team, you know, and I'm like, that's good. Hopefully, uh, Ted Leonsis has a little more, you know, money in his pocket to buy a certain football uh, team in the D.C. area, but I doubt that's going to happen anytime soon. But um, anyway, I, I think that the Nationals, hopefully when the owner situation is taken care of, they will get the right people in positions 
and look and say, okay, what type of baseball people they can look and say, all right, um, let look for the next Dave, uh, Dave Dombrowski. Let's look for the next, um, you know, uh, general manager. If um, the one of the Nationals have right now is like, okay, um, they don't want to be, uh, they don't have uh, the argument or something like that. Like, okay, you know, are they going to really, uh, you know, settle things and stuff? If not, let's find that next person who's going to help build the Nationals up into a contender to not just be like, oh, they just won 100 games and failed the postseason, which they did multiple times before. In fact, when the World Series won, you know, I don't want to hold you too long, Rowdy. Yeah. Uh, that was the first time they actually won a playoff series, multiple ones. Yeah. They had, I mean, they never won a playoff series. They never won one. Right. And I want to see the Nationals continually to be in that Astros conversation. Heck, even in the, um, you know, look of the um, Dodgers. At least the Dodgers win a couple of those series, you know? I want to be in the conversation. I want them to be dangerous. I want them to be like, oh, gosh. And we're just hoping over life. here in Texas that Chris Young may be getting something going hiring Bruce Boshi and whatnot. I mean, I I, I want to give a guy like Boshi a chance. I just I just really, really hope that they're not just going to go and throw a bunch of stupid money at more and more veteran players who just aren't going to have it anymore because I've been down that road before with the A-Rod and the Chan Ho Parks and the Kevin Millwoods back about 20 years ago. And just I'm not looking for same verse, same same verse, same as, le- as first or whatever that, that saying goes. But let's just move on to the current present here. It is, of course, like I said, right now it's become a best of five series, essentially, uh, with the World Series right now. Who do you think is going to finish this thing off? I honestly think it's going to get close. I think this is going to be a seven-game series. And if it is a seven-game series, that gives it room for the Phillies. Because the Astros, you know, I think they've never been um, punched in the mouth before uh, like this. So they know the Phillies can come back. They came, they, they held the lead here. But you never know. For me, but... it's just yeah. Me, it's just the fact that the um. I think I think that even after last night's win, the Astros are still I think have only won two of their last nine World Series games at home. So even if they can get one win in Philadelphia to send this thing back to Houston for at least a game six, I I just it's gonna have to be wait and see for whether I me mean, they whether they can actually get. The job done even at home because they've been there so many times before so I, I my gut is just telling me that even though there's there's so many similarities i think in this phillies team to the 1993 squad and we know how the, how sadly that ended for them this might be the one team that i think they may find a way to get it done and i just would look forward to the salty tears of all those people complaining about a six-seeded team winning the World Series. Mm. Yeah, I think it's going to be a um, very interesting ride. That's why I think it is. I think it's going to be a very interesting series because if the Phillies lose at home, I think it will be a shock to them. But if the Astros, like I said, I think if it goes to Game 7, the Phillies are going to win. If it doesn't go to Game 7, the Astros are going to... I don't see Phillies just racking up. Like, I don't see them winning in the Game 6. I don't see the series ending in Game 6 with the Phillies winning, or Game 5. I just don't see that happening. Wait and see. Yeah. 